What's up YouTube? Today we are going to be talking about the differences between a doctor and PA. I had you guys send in a whole bunch of questions through Instagram, which you can follow me right here. And we went through all those questions and picked out our favorites. And I am joined today by a very special guest who is a physician assistant and also happens to be my lovely wife. Hey guys, I'm Andriana, Dr. Cellini's better half. And today I'm here to answer all the PA questions that you guys may have. So, how about we get into this? All right, so our first question I actually received a lot, especially from our overseas colleagues who don't have PAs working in their hospitals, and that is, what is a PA? A PA, which stands for Physician Assistant, hey. is a medical professional that practices medicine in collaboration or under indirect supervision with a physician. We treat, we diagnose, we manage patients, we assist in surgery. We are in all specialties or majority of specialties. It's basically like a direct extension of the physician, if that makes sense. Yes, I think every single physician works with PAs or has their own PA in their private practice. Uh, they are everywhere. In the US, mostly, yes. yeah. Okay, so our second question is also for Andriana. I guess nobody likes me, even though this is my channel. Um, so yeah, why did you choose the PA route? So I chose the PA route. Um, I was just in a unique situation. Coming out of high school, I was a pre-med major. Um, however, I did find, find out that my college was offering a combined program. So I was finishing undergrad and PA school all in four years. So I was a practicing PA at the age of 21. Prior to finding out what the PA program offered slash what a PA was when I was in high school, I really just enjoyed that you can do everything a physician can, practice, treat, diagnose, um, and I was able to complete it all within four years of going to school. And for those who don't know, I guess, how long does it normally take to finish PA So school? now it's a... There may be a few programs left that actually do offer the combined program, but usually it's four years of undergrad and then two and a half years of um, a master's degree. All right, so the third question sent in is, did you meet on the job? And the answer is yes. Whoops. A little cliche. Um, yeah, so cliche. So how do we, how do we meet? <laughs> so I was already at the hospital. I was the PA on the service. He was the incoming intern. We worked together on a rotation and I guess fell in love. Yeah. So I, she was already doing surgery and I was doing my surgery intern year or first year of residency at the same hospital. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. I saw her the first day. And I blew him away. Basically, so the rest is history. All right, so our fourth question now is. I'll read this one. What's the hardest part about being married to another healthcare provider? Um, I, I don't think there is anything hard. A lot of people think that just because you marry into medicine or marry someone else who practices medicine, that that's all your life revolves around. No. I but mean, I mean, yeah, it's cool when I can call Michael or text him about a cool case or an interesting case and we understand the lingo and so forth but we don't come home and just talk about medicine yeah i think it's actually cool to have someone who understands medicine and that i can like, talk to because if you're not dating someone in medicine as a lot of you guys probably know you tell them things and they're like i have no idea what you're talking about but at least i can tell her everything and she pretty much knows what i'm talking no, about no i know everything yeah and she knows everything um yeah, I don't think there's any downside to it. No. I think it's all upside. Agreed. The next question is, how much autonomy do you get as a PA and do doctors micromanage? Y'all. Y'all. <laughs> I guess this was a Southerner who wrote this. He's a Southerner, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, by trade. Yeah. <laughs> so I have full autonomy, um, especially in my urgent care. I have full autonomy. 
Um, if I do have a question or want to run something by my supervising physician, I do. Uh, when I was in Derm, I had full autonomy as well. When you work in a hospital, it's a little bit different because you're working in as, as like a team, so everyone collaborates together. Yeah, I think that's pretty dead on. I don't think any physician, basically any physician who has a physician assistant working with them will probably have worked with them for a while and knows how they operate and each of them know how they operate and they always trust the input of the PA. Agreed. Um, Once you and the physician have a relationship, there's really no micromanaging. You just work as a team to provide the best care for all the patients. So. So along those same lines of autonomy, there are certain specialties that a PA can go into where they are more autonomous than others. So like, what, what right. are the most so autonomous? If you go into an urgent care and you're the sole provider, you'll be totally autonomous. A dermatology office, whether it be cosmetic or medical, you'll be totally autonomous. Family practice, mm -hmm. um, very pediatrics maybe. Um, and then in the hospital setting, you'll be autonomous on the floors, but with certain things, you'll still have to run by your attending physician. Yeah, I think there, just from what I've seen, I think there are better specialties, in my opinion, for PAs than others. Right, but that also depends on your personality. Yeah, that's true. It depends on how autonomous you want to be. Be, right, exactly. Yeah, if you, yeah, completely agree. And like what suits you. Yeah, agreed. All right, the next question is, who has better hours? What are you talking about? <laughs> no um, chance. The beauty about being a PA in yeah, certain right. specialties is that you yeah. do get to do the three 12 to 13 hour days. Um, so you do. So sometimes you can work three days a week. Um, my particular schedule right now is I work three 13 hour days one week and then two 13 hour days and two eight hour days the other week. So it rotates. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a couple of days off a week. Yeah. Which is considered full time and she can pick up extra shifts as she wants. Um, I, on the other hand, am in residency and you guys know how terrible residency is. Well, it's also specialty dependent and radiology is on the better side of residency. Right. Um, but yeah, I usually work like, you know, the usual 50 plus hour work weeks, but then I also take weekend call and that's a whole pain in the butt too. So. For the most part, PAs do have better hours. Actually, 100%. majority of the time. Almost all the time they do. <laughs> Our next question, it's for the both of us. And it's, do you get annoyed when family members ask you for medical advice? I would say no. I think medicine is really challenging for those who don't understand it. So when you have a family member to explain it to you as slow and how many times you, you, need, you yeah. need, yeah. And in layman's terms. Yeah, yeah. it works to your advantage. Yeah, and I, I remember when I was in med school, I had a professor say like my first day of med school, he was like, from this day forward, your family is going to call you for everything medical related. And that's kind of like what you're getting into. So- And I, that does happen to us. Yeah, I kind of expected regularly. that. <laughs> With <laughs> friends, family. <laughs> I mean, you name it. Some people come out of the woodwork and call me that I haven't spoken to in like 20 years telling me about, you know, some cold they had, but yeah, your family calls me a lot. Yeah. And then it's funny because a lot of times her family calls me and my family calls her. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe they want a different perspective. True. But yeah. Non biased opinion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next question is Are PAs useful in interventional radiology? And the answer is 100%. I work closely with one PA and two nurse practitioners on our interventional radiology service, and they function very highly on their own. They do a ton of procedures um, and I mean, they, they, they manage- They see outpatients, <laughs> yeah. patients in their clinic, what else? Yeah, they manage patients, they see patients on the floor, they do a ton of procedures every single day. New, and, new consults. Yeah, new consults. I mean, without them, we, I mean, we can't function because the volume is so high and if they don't take a piece of that pie, I mean, can't function, period. All right, so the next question is, who is more stressed during work? Um, I think it's probably but me. But she has it worse than I do because she deals with patients all day long, so. <laughs> yes, I it's did. very stressful when you're the sole provider and you're seeing over 50 patients a day that come in for colds, abdominal pain, lacerations, head injuries, ortho. 
yes, it gets very stressful. I mean, he's probably more mentally stressed. I'm physically and mentally stressed. Yeah, she's kind of like running around all day long seeing patients and they're just constantly flowing into her office and she can't leave until they're all seen. So I think that's probably more stressful. It's kind of, it's a little different. I get also stressed if I'm on call and the list is just piling up and I have to get right. through it because I can't leave until I finish it. But it's kind of like a different stress. I think we're both probably stressed. Yeah. I, it's also different when you work as an outpatient versus inpatient. Inpatient, you have a lot of help and you're always working with a team. Yeah. Outpatient, you're if you're the sole provider, it's all on you. So it's a different kind of stress. Yeah. So that, and that's the other thing about if you want to be super autonomous, you'll have probably have a lot of work. Right. You have to, you're ultimately making the final decision, the final yeah. call on the you're patient's care. You're responsible. So. Yeah. Right. So this one is which one is it? Do PAs have specialties slash residencies? Um, yes, PAs have a ton of specialties and that's the beauty of becoming a PA is you can work in two or three or four specialties. Um, so as I said, I was a full-time surgery PA and then a dermatology PA and right now I'm doing full-time urgent care. So I already did three specialties. And that's actually pretty cool because they have the opportunity to switch specialties, whereas I do not. Right. I'm kind of locked into radiology and interventional radiology, and if I were to switch at this point, these last four years that I put in would be forfeited, and I would have to start all over and do a whole nother residency, which I'm not doing, by the way. Right. So this is our final question, so that we're not boring you guys. Right. All right, so what is it? We'll do a more personal question, I guess. I guess so. Uh, do you want kids and how do you expect to manage, manage work-life balance? Um, yes. yes, we do want children. <laughs> Good thing we agreed on that, that would've been weird. <laughs> um, probably not soon. I think it's time for Michael to focus on his career as well as myself um, and in the next couple of years, Maybe, who knows. I want to finish residency first and kind of get settled before we go that route. Produce baby Cellinis. Yeah, can we have baby Cellinis running around? And regarding work-life balance, that comes again with being a PA. You do have that option of working full-time, being a parent full-time. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with uh, PAs. So I think we'll manage. I think so. All right, guys, so that concludes this session on doctor and physician assistant q a hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any other questions leave a comment below for a doctor or a pa if we liked it we'll respond to it we don't respond to mean comments we don't respond to mean comments if you want to see more of Andriana on my channel let us know in the comments as well smash that like and subscribe button tell them to smash it smash it <laughs> smash that like and subscribe button otherwise we'll see you on our next video why did we stop it? I don't know. People outside of the U.S. U.S. <laughs> Take three. All right, YouTube fan. No, uh -oh. me. Uh oh. What? Alrighty. <laughs> that made no sense. Okay, we have to do this again. Let's do it again. All right. <laughs> Take five. I'm gonna be editing this all night. <laughs> Uh, no, um, that was bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. All right. And then boom. All right.